A pathologist is doing a post thyroidectomy biopsy, and you will see ground glass nucleoli uh, and nuclear grooves. What is the most likely pathology? Correct, it is papillary carcinoma thyroid. That is correct. So, papillary carcinoma thyroid, the histopathological features are very important, right? And you can get orphan anionide nuclei, which are optically clear or empty appearance. That is ground glass or orphan anionide nuclei. So, orphan anion was a comic strip character, and the artist who made this comic strip character forgot to make pupils in the eyes, right? So, that is why you have a clear looking eye or an orphan anionide nuclei. In addition to this, you have intranuclear inclusions or grooves which are there, and you have samoma bodies. And there are samoma bodies which are foci of dystrophic or metastatic calcification. Samoma bodies are foci of dystrophic calcification or metastatic calcification. Very good, correct. So you can see here, uh, this is what the slide looks like. This is papillary carcinoma. You can see the orphan anionide nuclei here. And these are the classical samoma bodies, which are foci of dystrophic calcifications, right? which you can see in papillary thyroid cancer as well. So you should be able to identify this. Now, medullary thyroid cancer, what will be the question stem? which will make it medullary thyroid cancer on FNAC or on histopathology, what will the pathologist see for us to clinch the diagnosis of medullary thyroid cancer? Very good, correct. Amyloid rich stroma. This is amyloid rich stroma. Very good. So this pinkish material, amyloid rich stroma, if you get on an FNAC of thyroid, we are looking at medullary thyroid cancer. It looks like these, you know, cherry blossoms. This was a picture of cherry blossoms, which I clicked. Looks absolutely the same pink as these cherry blossoms. Now, two more conditions of thyroid where you should know the histopathological features. Graves disease, you will see tall columnar cells. In Graves disease, which is a cause of hyperthyroidism, tall columnar cells, very good. And Asian, very good answer. So you will see scalloping of colloid. You will see scalloping of colloid. And if I zoom in, I'll show you what do I mean by scalloping of colloid. Can you see that colloid is empty here? There is scalloped colloid. Again, scalloped colloid. So scalloping of colloid is a characteristic feature along with tall columnar cells in Graves' disease. This is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the histopathological feature which you will get is extensive lymphocytic infiltration. Very good. Correct. Justin, correct. You will get lymphocytic infiltration. That is what you need to look out for. You will see lymphocytic infiltration. That is why it is known as lymphocytic thyroiditis as well. So I've just gone through all the possible thyroid related pathology questions. I've told you the histopathological features. A 35 year old male undergoes terminal ileal resection for Crohn's specialization. Which of the formations is least likely to occur after the operation? Correct. So vitamin C deficiency is the correct answer. Vitamin C deficiency. Most of you got it correct. So duodenum is responsible for absorption of carbohydrates, proteins, minerals. Jejunum is responsible for glucose, proteins, folic acid, vitamin C and B1, B2 and B6. So vitamin C deficiency can occur if jejunal resection was done. Terminal ileum is absorption of amino acids, lipids, cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins. So these are the deficiencies which you can get in terminal ileal resection. Also terminal ileal resection can give rise to gallstone formation because the, there is interruption in the enterohepatic circulation. Right? And if there is extensive terminal ileal resection, there can be bacterial overgrowth as well. Right? Bacterial overgrowth can also be seen in short bowel syndrome. If extensive resections are done, then bacterial overgrowth can also be there.
so you should know this this actually is frequently asked you should know which portion of bowel is absorbing which element and resection of which segment is going to give rise to more problems you should know about this you are in the std clinic and you come across a patient with syphilis which of the following is matched wrongly again uncommon question uh, but <laughs> you should just know so the correct answer is d saif and shagun you were correct d is the correct answer so primary syphilis you are going to get a shanka right primary syphilis you get a shanka secondary you get a palmer rash and lymphadenopathy and condyloma latum neurosyphilis can also be there then you can have latent syphilis tertiary syphilis you can get neurosyphilis you can get aortitis and you can get gummers as well congenital syphilis you can have abortions or stillbirth the child can have a rash osteochondritis periostitis and you can have hutchinson's teeth interstitial keratitis and deafness these are the features in children which you can get so again like i told you uncommon question but there's no harm in knowing these points a patient presents with cervical lymphadenopathy and fever and with late weight loss co-needle biopsy reveals the presence of reed sternberg cells i think so this is a very straightforward question hodgkins lymphoma is where we see reed sternberg cells right so the reed sternberg cells you get the owl eye appearance you get owl eye appearance and the ihc markers are cd15 and cd30 cd15 and cd30 so this is the owl eye appearance this was a picture which i had clicked long time back at a bird sanctuary uh, quite zoomed in picture i could uh, he was sitting comfortably so this resembles the owl's eye appearance of reed sternberg cells now tell me this patient this patient gets chemotherapy also gets radiotherapy and 20 years later this patient develops a thyroid swelling what is the most likely diagnosis very good correct so papillary thyroid cancer and i want to highlight that this is one of a com this is a common question stem which you can be asked in the exam that a young patient undergoes radiation for hodgkins lymphoma 20 years later develops a thyroid swelling that is most likely to be papillary thyroid cancer because one of the leading risk factors for papillary thyroid cancer is radiation we discussed this in the previous settings 